Hey my friends, Late Boy Scout here with an overdue knife review. I've been meaning to knock this one out for a very long time. And let's see if we can get through it tonight. This is the BK7 by K-Bar. BK stands for Becker Knife and Tool. BK and T is the actual name of it, but BK stands for Becker Knife. Ethan Becker, by the way, is the uh, designer of this here knife. And um, as I understand it, he kind of had his own line of knives, and then they were sort of bought out by K-Bar, and now he sort of designs for K-Bar. I may be off base on that, but I think it goes something like that. The K-Bar BK-7 is sort of in the sweet spot between the BK-2 and the BK-9. The BK-2 being sort of, I think it's a 5-inch blade, if I'm not mistaken, 4.5 to 5-inch blade. And it's also an incredibly stout knife, this one is that, by the way, at about, uh, if I'm not mistaken, three-eighths of an inch thick. Do I have that right? No, I think I have that wrong. I think it's more along the lines of three-sixteenths. That's got to be what it is, three-sixteenths. Three-eighths would be insane. Three-sixteenths of an inch thick makes for a very stout knife, a very tough knife. And the BK2, I believe, is in that same range. I don't own one, so I can't say for sure. And the BK9, of course, also about the same range, but a much longer knife, being 9 inches instead of 7. So again, kind of in the sweet spot between those two very similar knives, all of which share the exact same handle scales, by the way, these Grivery hand handle scales, which are a little bit slick for me, which is why I, add the, which is why I added the sports tape on here. It's um, made for a much nicer grip uh, when cold, when wet, when dirty, when whatever. Uh, a little bit of tape on there. Not too aggressive, but a little tacky. It works just right. Gives just the right kind of grip that I want. And of course, a little lanyard, just a little 550 cord, nothing special. Simple overhand knot, didn't overdo it. Just enough to hang on to the knife if I'm chopping, doing any kind of hard work with it. It's perfect. Also, a very nice flat end here, a pommel, for beating this knife into things, or perhaps beating the knife down onto things makes for a very, very useful tool overall. Some kind of overdone jimping there, what we, what I would call jimping, I guess, but it's really sort of a decorative rampiness, I don't know. Anyway, it's a good ramp, anyway, but uh, the way that it digs into your thumb is, well, maybe it's just right, actually, because this is not an EDC knife. You may be using it with gloves on, so you want that to grab onto the material that your thumb is wrapped in and kind of grab onto that as you're using it. And also, because you're going to be using it a little bit harder, if that were really aggressive jimping, I'd just kind of tear up your thumb, and that's not a good idea. So maybe that's just about right, actually, the kind of jimping that uh, Becker put on there. So good job. Uh, it's got a nice flat ground blade, and, you know, not fully flat ground, though. And that's one of the criticisms I've leveled against other knives is that a fully flat ground blade in the outdoors, in my experience, and this is just in my experience, this is going to be totally different for you perhaps, in my experience um, makes it a little less tough, a little less strong for really, really hard use. So a nice partially ground, partially flat ground blade, or saber ground you might call it, um, makes for a tougher knife, a tougher blade, while maintaining a really nice fine edge here. And that's what we've achieved here on the BK7. It's a really good fine edge that's good for carving, it's good for batoning, it's good for chopping. It's a fantastic knife in every way that I can imagine. And I will tell you one thing about it. This 1095 Crovan steel, which is what the blade is made of, is tough. It's hard. It holds a pretty good edge for a really long time. Getting that back to a razor sharp edge uh, can be quite difficult. And I believe I have one on here now. Let's just give it a quick try. See if I can get some hair off of here. Let's see. I thought I had one on here. I thought I had a... Yeah, it's, it's taken some off. You can just see that. Okay, so I have gotten a razor edge back on this knife. 
although it's taking off a little bit of skin cells as well as it's going. However, I'm satisfied with that. Go ahead and blow that off and get rid of it. Wipe off that yucky skin. So yeah, you can get this back to a razor sharp hair popping edge as it came from the factory, but it does take a fair amount of work once again because that steel is just very, very hard. That's a good thing though. In the outdoors, in the work that you might be doing with this knife and the work that I've done with this knife, I've been very glad that it's so tough and so resilient. Um, it just holds up extremely well and has done, I don't know, it's kind of run laps around so many other knives that I've had. <laughs> just <laughs> batoning like crazy through some really hard knots and um, a, lot of, a lot of wood, a lot of firewood. That tells me that what we have here is a fantastic outdoors blade. It's also marketed as a tactical blade or a combat utility blade is kind of their name for it. Would I put this in a combat role? I don't know, man. I've never been in a combat role, so it's kind of hard for me to say. If you are not too adverse to the weight, which is about 0.85 pounds, if I'm not mistaken, if you're not adverse to that weight and you can handle it, then yeah, I would love to have something this tough in a combat role and all the survival that might uh, come about from that role. Definitely, I'd love to have a knife like this. However, if you need to go far more lightweight, mm, not such a good idea. It's just a heavy one, that's all. Uh, let's talk about the sheath a little bit. We've said a lot about the knife. The sheath is a Cordura nylon, a pretty tough one. In my, uh, in my estimation, in my opinion. It's a good sheath, you know, you got your belt loop right here. You've got a way to attach some molly, perhaps through here. Okay, so that's pretty good. Then of course you can tie that to your leg. I've never used it in that capacity, to be totally honest with you. I always throw it in a pack, just like this. Knife in the sheath, all snapped together. Throw it in the pack, just like that. And personally, I like carrying it that way better than I would like carrying this on my leg. I just, if I'm going to carry a knife on my belt and have it uh, slapping around on my leg, I want it to be fairly small. For instance, the uh, K-Bar, what's this called again? Oh yeah, the fin, the Janda fin. This is a good size. Now this is a tactical knife. I, don't know, I know that, okay? I know that full well. But it's also a good size and pretty useful as a woods knife. And just, it's, it's the right size for me. I like this size of a knife on my belt. Also, the Cold Steel SRK, perfect size for me. Absolutely love this size of knife on my belt. Doesn't get much better than the SRK, in my opinion. Particularly, the Carbon V SRK. Does not get much better than the Carbon V SRK. However, anything short of that, and short of the SRK, the Carbon V SRK, I'm thinking that the BK7 is a fantastic knife, especially for the money. How much are you going to pay for this? In the $65 neighborhood, as of, what is today? I think we're in March right now. Mid-March 2012. In the $65, $65 neighborhood from Amazon.com, that's with free shipping. Okay, Other websites, you're looking at $80 bucks plus shipping. That's, good. That's not too bad of a price either for what you get with this knife. Now, one thing I'll point out, when I got this knife from K-Bar, it was actually a replacement for another knife that I had that busted. That was the K-Bar Large Heavy Bowie. Um, when I got this as a replacement for that, they sent me the version of this knife that actually also comes with the Remora. A very cool little neck knife. Now, this is actually the sheath that was kind of stuck to the bottom there. You can see that I sort of tore the plastic where it was sewn to the bottom here, and that's kind of how it went in. However, I also have, if I'm not mistaken, yes, the neck knife sheath for this knife. So you can actually make this tiny little utility knife that is just a little throw in with the BK7 and wear this as a neck knife. Kind of have all your bases covered with this little package here. Now, will you get that when you buy it from Amazon or wherever else you buy it? I'm not sure. I'm not sure if that's the way they still sell it today. Again, if you buy this on its own, you're looking at about a $20 knife, $25 knife just for this. This is 440A steel, if I'm not mistaken. Still a pretty good steel. 
still gets nice and sharp, razor sharp. It's very nice and actually quite comfortable for very small tasks, little carving tasks, even tiny little batoning tasks. Nice little knife, really like it. And the fact that it was thrown in with this is a huge bonus. Hopefully you get the version of this knife that comes with that. If not, you might just want to pick this up too. The little Remora BK13. Sweet little neck knife. Very cool. Made in China. Where is the BK7 made? It might say it on the blade. I'm not sure. Well, it says Olean, Olean New York, USA. And I believe that is where it is made in the USA. It doesn't say Taiwan or China anywhere on there, which it probably would if that's where it was made. So made in the USA. But I believe this is made in Mexico, the sheath here. Okay. It is a good sheath. It's a good package overall. I highly recommend the BK7 as a, as a woods knife, as a hard use, beating it up knife. If you need something like this in your kit, if you don't have something like this yet, I highly recommend that you look up the BK7. Find it for the best price you can get it, pick it up, keep it for a very long time. This knife will not let you down. I'm very glad I bought it. I've been using it hard and I've really enjoyed it. And uh, I've got the footage to prove it. I tell you what, it's, this is a fantastic knife. Well, that's my review of the BK7 by K-Bar. Thank you everybody for watching. I am the Late Boy Scout and I'll see you on the next one.